Howdy folks, Don Bruce here. So you might notice this looks a little bit different than the normal videos that come up from my channel, and that's because this video is designed to teach you how to make content packs for MTS or IB or whatever you want to call it. So content pack creation has changed a little bit in recent times and has actually gotten quite a bit easier. So I wanted to go over kind of a how-to from taking a vehicle basically from scratch and then putting it in game. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need, of course, is content. And for content, you're going to need to grab yourself a model. Now, the model type that MTS currently supports is an OBJ file. And how you get that, of course, is dependent on your editor. That's up to you. The only thing you have to make sure of is that the OBJ file has a UV mapping and it's textured. If you don't know what that is, then you probably need to figure that out before you even get to this far. But assuming you have such a UV mapped model, you're ready to go. So, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go, I'm going to get some content. Well, I downloaded some content from uh, Feller. So, we're going to go and just use that for the purpose of this tutorial. So if you go in here, let's go to some OBJ files. And I'm going to get a... Let's try this uh, Hanks, car Hanks 49, let's go with taxi, no one has a taxi car. Well, maybe they do, but we'll find out. Let's grab this taxi49.obj, and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put it back in the downloads inside of assets folder, and paste. Lovely. And, of course, I'm going to need to get a texture for that, because you have to have that. And no textures in there. Um, t -t 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 textures. Nope, none in there. It's models. It's a civilian, so maybe in there. Vehicles. MTB. Ah, here we are. Okay, so that was a... No, you go over there. We'll go open this in a new window, and we'll find... Uh, let's go figure out which color that was. That was a taxi, so we're going to need... There we are. 49C Taxi Cab. And, you know, actually, looking at this, you see how this has emerald green, fire red, plum, salmon. Let's go grab the non-taxi one, just because we'll get more, uh, we'll get more options of colors. So let's go select all of those that don't say, like, say 96C and 96P. That looks like a sub-name, so we're just going to drag that off of there. And I'm going to delete that. And we're going to go back to OBJs and go grab a Hanks 9049. White corn freight, earth brown, emerald, fire red, orange, golden, navy. Um. You know, I don't know which one of these is right, but see how the file size is all the same for all of these? I'm betting they're the same model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to rename this to Hanks 49. There we go. Make it simple. So we got a Hanks 49 OBJ and some textures to apply. So let's get started with that. So I'm going to open up Blender here and we're going to take a look at that model. Again, I'm using Blender 2.79. You can use different versions, but they may have quirks. Uh, 2.8 kind of does funky stuff with your exporting. So again, close that out, delete the uh, cube. Let's go import that OBJ file. I put it in downloads, assets, there we are. So, lovely, we got what looks like a sedan, and a pretty nifty looking one too. So, with that being said, the first thing you have to do when you import an OBJ model and want to get it working with uh, MTS is to make sure it's aligned correctly. By that, I mean... It needs to be aligned where the front of the vehicle is facing away from the green arrow in Blender, or if you're using other modeling programs, it needs to be oriented where the front of the vehicle is in the positive Z direction. Different programs will orient vehicles different ways. I believe this came out of uh, FMT, or is it FMT? Whatever Toolbox is called these days. And I think Toolbox orients the front of the vehicle to positive X, which is the red arrow. We don't want that. It needs to be positive Z, which in Blender is negative Y, and positive Z is actually Y, but Blender lies to you 
you'll have to get used to it if you want to mess with Blender. But in essence, it needs to orient that way. So, what do you do to change that? Well, you simply make sure you have everything selected on the model, and there's only body model, so we're good. You hit the R key to rotate it, and of course, Blender is being dumb and won't let you rotate it on a certain axis, but you can fix that. So just click somewhere, and then over here, you see this little stuff popped up, and that says Constraint Axis. That basically is saying, what axis do you want to rotate around? Well, we want to rotate around the blue arrow, which is the Z axis in Blender. Click Z, and voila. So now it's only going to rotate around that axis. And so we know it needs to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, which is going to be a value of negative 90. Voila. So, lined up. Now, the next thing you need to do with your models is make sure that they are centered correctly. Now, if you're doing a tank or something like that, or an aircraft, uh, things differ. But for cars, which we're going to be focusing on in this tutorial, the center of the car should go straight through that rear axle. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to go ahead and open Blender again. And this time we're going to open a official content pack model, just as a reference. And I'm going to open a scout because that's pretty much similar. We like the scout here. So as you see, the red line goes straight through that rear axle, right through the dead center. And so we're going to go and make the other model do that as well. So again, go back to this model. And now we need to move the vehicle. Now to do that, you can grab it and try and line it up, but you can only get so close and you're always going to be off a little bit. And that can be a pain when it comes to putting parts on. So we're going to be smart. If you hit this little plus thing up here, or you can hit the N key, this uh, point thingy shows up. And if you go in here and go into edit mode, you can also hit tab to change between them. Then you can go and you can select uh, select points or you can select an edge or you can go select a face. And if you select a face, that's going to get you basically the, this value of this little black dot here, which is the center of the face, which is the center of the axle, which is actually where we need that red line to go through. And if you know, it says it's at Y. Oh, oh hold on. See, look at this. It says it's at Y of negative 0.4. That can't be because the center of the of y is here, and that's positive y, so that should be positive something. Well, again, Blender lies to you. It puts this on local, which is, I don't know what the heck that means, but it's not the actual value. You want global. And see, now it's saying it's 2.09 away from the center, which makes sense, because in Blender it thinks that's positive y, so it's two units that way. So what you can do is you see it's 2.0 whatever units that way. So you can go grab that value and copy it to your clipboard, Go back to object mode, hit A to select all objects, in this case there's only one, grab it, and then over here where you have translate, we're going to not move it in Z, not move it in X, but we're going to move it backwards that many Y values. And that's going to perfectly line it up in this direction with the X axis. So again, you go do the same thing, in this case we need to grab the Z axis, which is the up and down, copy that, and then tab to object mode, grab it, move it up. Again, we don't want to move in X, we don't want to move in Y. You want to move in Z, but that's going to be positive. And voila! Now it's lined up. Awesome stuff. So now that you have your vehicle lined up, you're going to also want to double check that your modeling software didn't screw up your UV mapping, which is your texture mapping. So I'll show you how to import that and double check that everything's okay. Most of the time you won't have problems, but it's always good to check. So I'm going to minimize that, minimize that, and drag out another editor. This one I'm going to set to the UV image editor. So if I go over here and hit A to select everything, that shows me all my UV map points. I can hit A to select all of those, and I'm going to open a texture file to apply to them. Again, we go into our downloads file, and let's try... You know what, I'm curious to see what uh, fresh orange looks like. <laughs> we'll find out. So, we got some orange here. Lovely, lovely. And notice how the UVs are over here. This is something that a toolbox tends to do. I have no clue why, but it's what it does. 
sometimes this won't matter, but sometimes it will. And I'll show you a way to center that just in case, because sometimes you can end up with little gaps in your model. So what you need to do is go back over here to your, uh, to your model, make sure everything's selected. And you can go here and click this little orb and say texture. And what that'll do is that'll, instead of showing you just like hunks of white, will show you the texture on the model. Now, notice how there's some weird shading and stuff. That's because you have uh, Blender doing some lighting stuff. You got this, this lamp here. So if you were to grab it and move around it, it'd change the lighting. Ooh, well, we don't want the lamp there. So we're just going to hit delete and lamp is gone. So now, as you can actually see what the texture looks like. <coughs> so, yeah. So now you have your texture. Now, this looks good. I don't see any clipping or anything. But it wouldn't hurt to just double check that. So we're going to go back into edit mode. Select that object. Go into edit. Hit A to select everything. And we're going to make this line up. So again, you can hit select all your little mappings, hit G to grab it, and of course as you grab it, it's going to change. And while you can zoom in and try and get it to match, I mean, you're never going to get it perfect. There's always going to be a little bit of lines and stuff. So what you can do is you can go in here to UVs, say snap to pixels. What that's going to do is when you move this texture sheet, it's going to lock everything to the pixels. And that way you know it's going to be pixel perfect, literally, to what your model is. So, as you can see, there's some lines in here for shapes. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Eh, some untextured stuff in the hood. But eh, we could care less about that for the moment. No one will see that. So yeah, you zoom in here. That looks good. That all looks good. So this is the model, and it looks like it would per work fine. And in fact, if we were to go grab a different, uh, different skin here to hit this little open file. So let's grab the plum skin. And of course, that's the plum texture. And if you wanted to switch that, you could go here and just switch it to uh, fresh orange and switch back. And so that will be kind of our just different textures for the model when we get it in game. So, this is it for the moment with working with models and getting them set up to align. In the next tutorial, we'll go over how to split parts off and get them so they'll actually work with the MTS animation systems. You may not have to do this if your parts are already split off. Again, this is kind of pre-work. But that's it for the moment for me. I'm Bruce, signing off.